Orange juice pulp. Every time orange juice is made, this is the stuff that's left over. And in the US, there is a lot of it. In Florida alone, there's over 74 million citrus trees, and the orange juice industry accounts for over $9 billion of revenue. That is a lot of this pulp. Now, scientists have been trying to figure out ways to use this pulp. Currently, it's used by farmers and added to different cattle feeds. Some people take it and use it in their gardens. Now, what's been discovered is that the cellulose and fiber of this pulp is very good at retaining water and has a very good binding capabilities. Very similar to one of my favorite additives that I use quite a bit, methyl cellulose. Now, those of you that are new here probably don't know this, but I use methyl cellulose quite a bit in my videos because as far as an additive is concerned, it is a really great binder. It really is good at holding water, and it does something that's really neat. It firms up when you add heat to it. Now, everything that I'm reading is telling me that this stuff here can do pretty much the same thing. Now, we do have to run it through a little bit of a process. We're not gonna be adding this right into our veggie burger. So let's try it. I believe I have a basic understanding of the processes of how this works, and let's see if we could do this at home. It might work out, it might not. Let's find out, let's see. I think it's gonna work. I'm really excited. Let's see if orange juice is gonna change the vegan meat industry. Now, if you make your own orange juice at home, you might have some orange pulp, but realistically, to get this much orange juice, I had to go to a local juice bar and ask them if they would give me some of this. I went over to one of my favorite places, Skybird Organics, that's Sky with an E. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can visit them and say hi. If you were in Orlando, check them out. They have some really good juice drinks. They have some cool smoothies. They're like a cool experimental kitchen. They have some pretty awesome stuff, but they were really nice to give me a lot of their orange juice pulp. So the very first thing that we're gonna do to get started is we're going to try to press as much of the juice out of this citrus fiber as possible, this pulp. So I'm just gonna take some of this cheesecloth here. Normally I would do a double layer, that's why I have so much because I was originally thinking about a double layer. And we're just going to twist until we can try to extrude as much of this liquid out as possible. Now I'm gonna set this just to kind of drip again for about another 20 minutes. Just try to get out as much as I can. I'll probably come back and keep turning this, keep tightening this up until, you know, we can, until I feel like we're not gonna get any more liquid out of this pulp. Okay, so we've had a little bit of a blowout just from twisting uh, the single layer of cheesecloth. Just couldn't really take the, the amount of force that I was putting on it. Ended up ripping, lost, uh, maybe, maybe like an, uh, not even a quarter of a cup of the pulp. So what I did was I wrapped it up in two layers of cheesecloth. I found my tofu press that I've been looking for and I put it between the tofu press and we were able to get quite a bit more juice out. We were able to squeeze out almost three cups of orange juice. Pretty excited about that. Ooh, that is good. So at this point, I kinda wanna wash this, and I'm gonna do that with the alcohol that I purchased. Now, it probably seems counterintuitive that since we've just strained this, and squeezed it into this dense pulp that we're gonna add any more liquid, but that's the plan. So to do the next step, I'm gonna use just a clear glass bowl because I just wanna see how this liquid comes out. I'm gonna save this cheesecloth because we're gonna squeeze again. And I'm just gonna run this in this vodka bath. Now, like I said, if you can get like a pure grain alcohol, that's more of like a 75% alcohol, I think that's gonna do better. But for right now, let's just take a 10, 15 minute bath in some vodka. Okay, so this has been sitting in here for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna transfer bowls just so I can kinda, I just wanna see what the color looks like if they're lighter. And I will say just the stuff that's been kinda like left here seems to be a little bit lighter. Like we're definitely extracting some of that orange and citrus juices out of these fibers. We probably could do another wash, but I think at this point we're just gonna try to squeeze as much as we can. So at this point, I'm gonna run them into the cheesecloth just like we did before. I'm gonna run them it through the cheesecloth and then through the tofu press. Just try to press out as much of the liquid as we can. Okay, so we were able to recover just about all of the alcohol, as you can see here. There's even still some left. We'll save this for later. <laughs> so at this point, ugh, at this point, we should have a pretty clean citrus fiber. I believe this is pressed pretty good. 
and you can see these fibers, they look really nice. I think they're still very water retainable. So for the next step here, I just have some dehydrator racks. So I'm gonna set this guy for, I don't really know how long this is gonna take, but I'm gonna set it for six hours. I'm gonna set it to 100 degrees. Now I'm gonna kinda of check it every hour or so. Let's just see, cause we just need to get it to the point to where it's completely dry. Once it's dry, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is getting us closer to making a plant-based burger out of orange juice pulp. Okay, so this has been drying for about four hours. You could see that it has came down to essentially just a crumble. Everything is very dry. Now at this point, the processing for this is done. The only thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be running it through a spice grinder to kind of try to like mill it down into the finest possible powder that we can get it. I'm just gonna do little sections, just a little bit at a time, to just see if we can actually turn this into a powder. I think we'll get, I think we'll do okay. So that's looking pretty good. We're just gonna dump this into a container here. And honestly, the way these fibers kind of stick together, you can see, how they're gonna make a really good binder and emulsifier, honestly. So you can see what that four pounds of orange pulp gave us in the end was just this one uh, two cup container. So I have three different burger mixtures here. Now these are all the same mixtures with TVP and a few different ingredients. I'll leave the recipe in the link below. This is one of my uh, old uh, TVP recipe burgers where I introduced methyl cellulose. It's a really great burger. It's really easy to put together. And if you have methyl cellulose, it works really well. Today we're gonna be mixing one of them plain without any sort of binder, one of them with methyl cellulose, and then one of them with the orange binder. So we're gonna let these guys sit for about the next 20 minutes, let all of that water suck up into the TVP, let all of this get rehydrated, then we're gonna cook three burgers. We're gonna see which ones hold better, which ones stay in more form. We're not worried, really worried about taste on this uh, journey here, unless it tastes like oranges, because we don't want it to taste like oranges. Ooh, I'm excited about this one. <laughs> Okay, so we have our three burgers. They've been sitting for the last 20 minutes. We have three plates up here. Orange plate for the orange burger, yellow plate for the methyl cellulose, and green for the all natural, nothing added to it. So we're gonna start with the all natural first. I'm just gonna get a bowl of the TVP mixture here. Now it is pretty wet. It definitely, I don't think it's gonna stay together. There's nothing in here, no gums, no gels, nothing to kind of bind it together. I'm telling you just from the way this is cooking, it doesn't look promising at all. Let's see if we can flip it. So with no binders, no gums, no nothing, we have no burger. This did not flip. It just kind of turned into a minced meat. Let's wipe this out and get started on our next burger. So the methyl cellulose is very like wet. It's very sticky. So this burger is gonna probably come out. It's gonna stick together really well. Now this burger is looking pretty great. It seems like it's gonna hold together. Let's flip it. So that burger flipped, no problem. It's, it's staying together in one piece. That is our methyl cellulose. Now the one that I'm most excited about, my orange fiber burger. So this feels pretty good. Not as gummy as the methyl cellulose version. Okay, let's give it a flip. <laughs> I'm excited about this one. So here it is, this is the methyl cellulose burger. It held together, it is a nice solid burger. It does have a little bit of squish to it compared to a normal, like a regular burger once it's cooked. Well, it does taste good, has a nice chew, has a nice palatability to it. Now the citrus fiber burger looks very similar, has a nice kind of, it held, it held up pretty good as a burger. It did kind of break up a little bit on the flip, but as soon as we pulled it off, it held together pretty good. It went through that other side, was able to cook all the way through. Holds up pretty good. Doesn't hold up as strong as the methyl cellulose burger does, but that's just because of the refinement process. But the citrus fiber did retain a lot more moisture, making this a juicier burger. I would say if you were to use the citrus fiber for a burger, I would definitely add it with a gum or something just to give it a little bit more of that extra chew and bounce that the methyl cellulose gives you. But that's it. I hope you guys like this one. Orange juice changing the vegan meat industry. Didn't really think that one was gonna happen. But if you haven't yet, please make sure you click the subscribe button and click this video right here. It's gonna be another one of my burger videos.